Well, one of the voices who will be doing that is former Prime Minister Gordon Brown, who we can speak to now. Good morning. Uh, Good morning, Sarah. Do you agree that the Scottish Government, the SNP-led Scottish Government, do now have a mandate for another referendum? Well, actually, what Nicola Sturgeon said yesterday is there is to be no immediate referendum. Uh, And I think what you said on television last night is there's no likelihood of a referendum for uh, some time because we're trying to sort out COVID and the economy. So you've got to use the time to do three things. Can you make the United Kingdom work better? Can its decision-making process work better? And you need a review of the whole constitution. Can we respond to what we found in our poll, which I'm publishing today? 73% of Scots want to cooperate better with the United Kingdom. Can we find a way of doing this? And thirdly, because the big issue is not the referendum, the big issue is independence. Uh, Can we find a way of explaining to people the facts about what independence means? And I would challenge Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, She's had years to think about this. Tell us what independence means, the benefits, and tell us the costs. Tell us about the pound. Tell us about the pension. Tell us about the border. Tell us about quantitative easing. None of these questions have been answered. And every time you ask her, she says she's going to produce a plan sometime. We actually should have answered these questions by now. Well, that's what the SNP will be working on, because, as you say, it's not likely that there's going to be another actual vote for a couple of years. They, they'll they concentrate on making their case for independence, but the yeah, other but side of the argument what... need to put forward a positive view of the United Kingdom. Throughout this election, we heard uh, parties that want to keep the United Kingdom together arguing against independence, uh, against having another referendum, but not putting forward a positive view of the UK. That's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, We've set up a group called Our Scottish Future. We're asking people to join us, is to put the positive, the patriotic and the principled case for the union. I don't want to run on any negative case. You see, what's happened in Scotland is people assume from London it's 50-50, 50 hell-bent on independence, 50% died in the will unionists. That's not the Scotland I see. The the middle Scotland, that's about 40% of Scots. They're certainly more Scottish than British. They prefer Nicola Sturgeon, obviously, to to Boris Johnson. But they actually want cooperation between Scotland and the rest of the UK on health. They want it on the climate change. They want it on jobs and the economy. Uh, And, of course, uh, they want Scotland and the UK to find a way of working better together. Now, I think it means four things, if I may say so. A more inclusive centre, so Boris Johnson's got to change. Better relations, so you've got to have a permanent forum between the regions and the nations and the centre of government, which Boris Johnson should chair. And you need to look at the powers that are relevant uh, post-Brexit for the parliaments. Now, all these things can be looked at in the next uh, few months. And Boris Johnson should set up the Commission of Inquiry. He should look at a permanent forum for cooperation, not these one-off meetings that uh, come out of panic. Uh, And he should look for how we can actually cooperate better. And the health service is a great example. But there's no reason to assume Boris Johnson is going to do any of those things. You can put forward any thoughts you like about rearranging the constitution, giving more powers to the Scottish Parliament or how the UK government ought to work with the Scottish government. But the truth is the Labour Party, even if it is looking at this, is not in a position to implement any of this. It's too late. The argument is now between Nicola Sturgeon's vision of an independent Scotland and Boris Johnson's position on the UK. You've already said it's not too late. You said it last night on television that there's going to be months, perhaps even a a year or two before this comes up in any real sense. We've got a funny war. Well, it's not too late to make a case for the union, but it's too late for the (laughs) government to institute any of your Labour ideas. Look, Boris Johnson will change his mind on this. Uh, His muscular unionism, that's an attempt to sort of put Britishness into Scotland. That's not going to work very well. Project Fear will not work. Scottish people are very proud indeed. Uh, But what he'll come to realise is what I'm suggesting. He will set up a review on the future of the United Kingdom. There'll be a constitutional review, like called Brandon 50 years ago. He will set up a permanent forum, in my view, of consultation between the nations, the regions and uh, the centre. And he will strive in the end for better cooperation. Now, whether he does it too late, I don't know. But these are the decisions that the government will make in the end. That's the patriotic, positive and principled case. And I do urge uh, all Scots who believe in this, Uh, because we are more Scottish than British in most cases. Uh, People would choose Scotland as against Britain if they had a choice, but people don't want to make that choice 
they actually want more cooperation. But they're going to be asked to make that choice. And it's, for the health service and everything else. That choice is coming. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon is going to pass legislation to allow for another referendum. There will be some kind of showdown with the UK government. Now, the Scottish <laughs> Labour's position has been simply to say we don't want a referendum within the next five years, within the lifetime of the next parliament. But this argument is coming and Labour will have to take a side. And the question is, do they line up with the Scottish government and the Scottish parliament Parliament, who have a majority in favour of a referendum, or do they take sides with Boris Johnson saying he doesn't want to allow it to happen? That is a very difficult choice for the Labour Party. That's not the choice. The choice is what are the options available to the future for the future of this country? One is independence. Uh, one is the status quo. One is changing the status quo. I don't think you'll find a referendum is fought on the status quo anymore because people realise it's got to change. And I think you're underestimating the pressure that's going to come from Scotland for Boris Johnson to abandon this policy of muscular unionists, get people round the table and talk. That's the only way. This cannot be solved in the courts. The courts can tell you what you can't do. They can't tell you what you should do. And this will have to be resolved by people getting round the table at some point. Nicola Sturgeon knows. I would ask Nicola Sturgeon this morning, will she commission and publish the legal advice of her Uh, Lord Advocate of all the law officers, which will tell her that she's in danger of trying to have a Catalonian and wildcat style referendum when the legal advice is very clear. If she wants to be honest with the Scottish people, she should not only publish that legal advice, she should publish all the information and the facts and the figures about independence so that people will have all the facts in front of them if they ever have to make that choice. Now, Nicola Sturgeon has been very clear. She has no intention of having a wildcat um, Catalonia-style referendum, that she is only interested in one that is legally solid. But um, let me ask you... But um, but that raises a question, does it not, Sarah? She's got to publish her legal advice. Is she entitled at the moment... Is this, is, this is an argument that will come once they've passed the legislation to allow for a referendum. Let no, me ask you I one think, question think, about the UK Labour Party. But, but Sarah, Looking Sarah, at the let position, me, let no, no, be, no, no, we need to well, concentrate on the, wi- the wider question. Legal advice now. Let me ask you, though, uh, when you're looking across the UK at the position the Labour Party's in, do you see the challenge of electability greater now than that that you were facing in the 80s and 90s? It's a great challenge because, Sarah, we're facing seismic changes right across the Western world, America, Europe, Britain, economic dislocation greater than ever before, widening social in- in- inequalities. And you've got Brexit nationalism, Scottish nationalism, Welsh, <laughs> Irish, Ulster nationalism. And Keir Starmer and his leadership have got to deal with all these changes. So the Labour Party's got to change. We can never have the same policies as 1997. They can't be the same policies as 2019. He has got to be given the space and the power and the uh, leaders uh, working with him to change the Labour Party so that it can deal with these fundamental okay. challenges that have been aggravated by COVID that any right. Western social Gordon democratic Gordon party Brown, has I'm got to deal with. I'm terribly sorry, but we're uh, reaching the top of the air. Thank you very much for talking to us this morning.